Welcome back, all you strangers and freaks, to another episode of Video Game World Tours, a series where we slow down and soak in a game's environment. Today we're looking at the very much fictional, and in no way based on any real location, Los Santos from Grand Theft Auto V. Okay, that was a bit of a lie. Los Santos is obviously based around the real-life Los Angeles. I went to the wiki for the game just to see how much inspiration it takes and… wow. Nearly every major location has a real-life equivalent. That genuinely surprised me. I'm saying all this because I've never been to Los Angeles. I don't have that personal connection. So I'm gonna focus on looking at the world as a fictional video game rather than a digitized version of LA. Does that make sense? Alright, so Los Santos. It's a big city, and there really are a lot of things to do. What if we were to do… none of those things, and just roam the city streets? It's bizarre experiencing the city this way, instead of speeding down in a car from point A to B. Just walking around aimlessly, taking in the storefronts on one side, and traffic slowly moving by on the other. You know, I don't often talk about graphical fidelity in these videos, mostly because it's not super relevant when it comes to a world's design, at least in the way I look at them, but this game is technically beautiful. I hesitate to say it looks like real life, because it's still video gamey in a couple ways. Like the pedestrian count is severely lacking, this bush is just a bunch of flat plains mushed together, and most of the buildings aren't interactable. But I think this game was a big step up in terms of graphics reaching a point where we're closer to indistinguishable from real life. Especially for the time. Remember, GTA V came out in 2013, and this game still looks amazing. Say, we've been walking the streets a bit, let's visit some interiors. Here's a real high-class clothing store. This is what I'd expect to see on prime real estate in Los Angeles. They got a nice little changing room back here. Wait, I don't think there's a door leading into an employee's only back room. I feel like there should be one in a place like this. For shame, Rockstar, for getting such an important detail. This is a presumably more reasonably priced clothing store. It feels hip in here, trendy. I'm sure all the youth of the day would be coming in here for their outfits. Funnily enough, Michael actually comes here during the story to dress up for an interview at Life Invader, an obvious parody of Facebook. Actually, let's replay that mission and check out the Life Invader office. There's a ton of little details during that mission. First off, we have a vending machine with fake snacks. As always, these are a treat to come across. Flavored chips galore, big cheese. Sticky ribs, salt and sauce, which would you try? Drop in the comments. There's this dense board with all kinds of posters. Honestly, there's nothing super funny in here. Just some weird flyers and posters for albums and musicals. I like that they're all legible though. So many games make boards like this so low resolution you can't tell what they're supposed to say. But they went the extra mile and made all these. Thumbs up from me. The guy you're supposed to be following goes upstairs, but you can take a detour into the lobby. The mission doesn't bring you in here, yet you can come by nonetheless. Nothing too important or interesting, so we'll just move on. Heading up the stairs, we're in the belly of the beast. What do the workstations of these tech dudes look like? Pizza? Okay, sure, of course. There's an email on a lot of these monitors, but it's too low resolution to read. This is kind of what I was alluding to earlier. Most of the time when you find text like this in games, it's too low resolution to read. It definitely looks like they actually typed something up though. And the command prompt window has some text too. I can see that it says LOL at the end of this line. Really wish I could read it in its entirety. That's corny enough to probably be in some real office somewhere. Maybe even Rockstar's. I love how unashamed they are of being a data harvesting company. Data is there to be shared, and privacy just crossed out. 
I bet Facebook has an office with a whiteboard exactly like this. Oh yeah, that's some server hardware. Wish I could look at it on the other side of this barricade, though. That's about it for the Life Invader office, but we have some other places to look at in Los Santos. Like the airport. It feels so welcoming here. All this foliage and architecture really make this place stand out. Oh come on, really? You're gonna have something like this and expect people not to drive up it? Oh wow, that's a lot more air than I expected. Huh. A lot of people near the front. That's nice. Ooh, what's down here? Ah, metro system. Let's see what it's all about. Kaka. Cherish it. Classy. Some posters. What do we got? A map of Vinewood. Oh my god, that's some genuine Lorem Ipsum. An amazing find. Watch out for your stop. We go deep in the ghetto. And here we are, the train tunnels. Based off this map I found, they have a pretty big route. You can hop on and go for a good long ride. I love that they included this. Another weird little spot is the Pacific Standard Bank. If you've played online, you might recognize this place. If you stuck to the story mode, you might not have ever seen this. There was a heist added in GTA Online that sees you robbing this place. This was a new location added in that update, but they also added this interior back into story mode. So you can walk around in here, but there's nothing to do. And it's completely empty. Turns out there's people during the day, but at night there's nobody in here. No customers, no tellers, not another human soul. The rest of the world is so lively. It's bizarre being in a place so empty, especially one as nicely decorated as this. This really does feel like a prestigious bank. As long as no one's around, I'll just take a walk back here. Oh, you can scoot around the chairs. This is a little too much fun. I should move on. Wonder if I can... Huh, I need a security code. That sucks. It'd be cool to just walk through. big old vault door. Unfortunately, it's shut. But that's never stopped me before. With some well-placed explosives, you can blow it open and weasel your way in there. Not super impressive inside, but I like it. Super cozy little spot in a building you have no reason coming to in story mode. We'll look at one more spot in downtown Los Santos. Michael's home. This is one of those houses that feels too nice to really be welcoming. Too pristine, you know what I mean? Like they have all these books. Ain't no way anyone in this house is reading books. A book called I Am Philosophy by Tim Vapid. Imagine having that as a last name. A beautiful painting of two siblings who very much love each other. Look at that picture of a dog. It looks so weird, but I can't put my finger on exactly why. Let's see what upstairs is like. Yep, this is a girl's room alright. She's got a fame or shame poster rolled up. And also a self-help for women book on her desk. Didn't really take someone like Tracy to go for that kind of thing, but good for her. Jimmy's room truly is a gamer's den. Blinds shut, lights off, big ass TV. Of course he has trash strewn about. And a piece of pizza just sitting out on a plate on the floor. Doesn't get any more gamery than that. Honestly, not much else to see in here. A lot of the fun comes from interacting with the family members. But I'm um, all alone right now. Nice house though. Los Santos County is what I, and a lot of other people no doubt, think of when they think of Grand Theft Auto V. But there's a whole other section of the map to explore. 
Blaine County. It's such a stark contrast to the expensive and well-off county to the south. Instead of the tall, clumped-together buildings and well-maintained streets, you're met with rundown trailers connected with thin and shattered roads. This doesn't even feel like the same game as the places we just looked at. I love that this game has such variety. Let's spend some time soaking in the buildings around here. Really pick up on the details the level designers were putting down. This gas station feels old. Not even just the grimy texture work, but the overall design. Sandy's Gas Station. Not a franchised gas station, just Sandy's. And then of course, there's all these faded posters. Slivers torn away as the years have gone on, floating away in the wind, being carried to God knows where. And this front door, look at all those stickers. That's a gas station icon. So many little things all vying for your attention. Open all hours, closed Saturdays during July and August. That's a hell of a schedule. Sandy works hard, no doubt. Oh hey, it's another one of the vending machines from earlier. It has all the same stuff, unfortunately. A supermarket. Honestly, this is about what I'd expect from a supermarket in a place like this. Tiny, but a little bit of everything. Donuts, tuna, mayonnaise. What else could the human body need? Look at these poor couple houses. Really shows the state of the county if homes got this bad. These were completely decimated. Trash, tire, and rubble define these buildings. This one's got a mattress. Would you sleep on this for $20? I might. Of course, we have to look at Trevor's trailer. Outside, he's got a little pizza eating chair. Mattress, too. Front porch has, uh, probably seen better days. Inside the trailer definitely has. Like, by God, look at that toilet! Can I even show that on YouTube? This man really does eat a lot of pizza. And these are just the boxes that he hasn't thrown away. Anything interesting on the counter? Cheese grater. Wouldn't have expected to find that, but sure. Some dish soap. Good to know he keeps his dishes clean. Gotta be careful about what I show in this place. He has a lot of lewd things. A broken baseball bat that he taped together. He must really like that one. Okay, I better get out of here before I get demonetized. There's honestly so much more to Blaine County than what we've looked at. We just visited one of the towns, but there's lakes, hillsides, and full-on mountains. A lot of nature to soak in around here. But there's not much to really say about most of it. Maybe the nicest people don't live in this region, but it sure is beautiful. One more section before the final spot of the video. And this one's a bit of a curveball. We're going from physical locations to digital ones. The internet. Grand Theft Auto V has a surprisingly in-depth fake internet with a bunch of different random websites you can go to. You can find websites of in-game shows, games, and businesses. Here's the website for Fabian, Michael's wife's yoga instructor. You can see all his unique poses on the front page. And there's multiple pages, all with unique and handwritten text. Here's the site of the Los Santos Freegans, a group dedicated to rummaging through dumpsters of grocery stores and eating all their trash as a way to save the environment. Let's look at their recipe of the month. Creamed squirrel and e-cauliflower dip. There's the ingredients. Shouldn't be too hard to find that dripping wet mulched salad. And the steps. Get a tetanus shot, write a will, boil a squirrel in stolen hand sanitizer. You know, this sounds like a good time. Here's a site built to find drug mules. Sixfiguretemps.com I love the idea that drug manufacturers would make a goofy website like this and try to sell some random guy without a criminal record on getting into drug smuggling. And they even give you a little tip on how to make a shank. How thoughtful. 
This is a site promoting the POW Cleanse, a 10-day routine that sees you mimicking the lifestyle of a prisoner of war in their diet. Day 1. Eat nothing and drink water out of a really dirty cup. Importantly, day 5 through 9 has you eating only raw grass and bugs. I bet that could get you far. Here's a page about classic in-universe films. There's 18 of them on this site. You can read their synopses and even look at user reviews. Life Invader, the social media office we visited before, actually has a functional site. You can see social media posts from all the various characters in the game, and a lot of them are related to the events that happen in the story. Here's Jimmy talking about the boat he tried to sell off and justifying it. He also remarks that Franklin the Home Invader turned out to be pretty cool. Oh man, Lester would not have a Life Invader account. Oh, that's great. Amanda being upset about her favorite jewelry store being robbed. Most definitely the one Michael hits for the first heist. A story in two comments. Lovely. There's also a Twitter parody called Bleeder. A completely different set of posts over here. A lot of the same people, though. It's cool that they have accounts on both sites. That's interesting. This person claims they were involved in the jewelry store heist, and that someone told them to forget a thousand things a day or something. And then they say, craziest vacation ever. That's obviously a reference to Michael's line leaving the store, but the guy he told that to was a traffic cop or something. I don't think a person on vacation would get a job like that. Is that a genuine error? Or is it poking fun at people that like to claim they were involved in things for attention? Not sure. I made fun of a stranger on the internet. I feel empowered. But why isn't that everyone online these days? Jimmy bleats. I'd tell my sister to get... Huh. But that already happened. Repeatedly. By multiple dudes. At Tracy DeSanta. Such an intense burn. And he ats her. He's wild. I love him. Another post from him saying, Just found this wild video guy called Pretzel. Y'all gotta subscribe to him on YouSnoob. That's funny. This universe even has a fake YouTube. Tanisha says, So proud of my baby. You the dumbest brain surgeon I know, but I still love you. Oh my god, that's THE brain surgeon. Franklin's probably smarter than him. I love how these social media sites truly have the gamut of the human experience. You have a post saying, My daily routine. Wake up, be awesome, go to bed. Hashtag why I rock. Alongside a post that reads, If my mom complains one more time about being alone on her birthday, I'll run downstairs and rip out her catheter. This is art. Alright, time for the final spot of the video. This one's great, a friend showed me this recently. There's one little spot on the freeway close to the airport. It's obvious this was intended to be a little ramp point so you could speed off the freeway onto the street below. But let's not do that. First you gotta find a long vehicle. A bus or a big truck will do. Then, line it up perpendicular to oncoming traffic so you're completely blocking it. Maybe get another vehicle to block the other lanes if you need to. At that point, you wait. Wait until you've created a pretty nasty traffic jam. Then, you simply point your gun at one of the drivers. Pure chaos will erupt. It's like they're sleeper agents set to go bananas, and you just said their trigger word. They'll slam into each other, ram into the truck, and even fly off the freeway without an ounce of concern for their own lives. Their humanity is reduced to nothing but base instincts here. Eventually, the pile-up will get too piled up to allow for more people to drive off the edge. But man, even just looking at this is a beauty. And it's completely random how it'll turn out. I'm writing this as watching one of the pile-ups with the game open. But when I go to record footage for this part, I'll have to do it again, and it'll no doubt be completely different. Who knows what chaos I'll catch on camera. It's funny how I've spent so much time in this video talking about Grand Theft Auto V as a real world. 
But for the bookend, we're basking in the glory of goofy NPC AI. If that's not Grand Theft Auto, I don't know what is. Check out either of these videos. One of them is the best thing you'll ever see, and the other is the worst thing you'll ever see. Which is which? Guess you'll just have to watch both. Thanks for watching and see you next time.